In order to look at this new unit, graphing quadratic equations, we first had to go through the one unit of factoring equations and expressions as well as solving said equations, quadratic equations. So again, just as a quick review, the quadratic equation is written in the format ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So this equation, what it is, is the quadratic equation. We know it's a quadratic equation because it has a degree of two. When put in standard form, highest exponent to lowest, the highest exponent is two, hence x squared. And that's how we know we have a quadratic equation. A, B, and C are just integer coefficients where A is not equal to zero. So those are just numbers, one, two, 10, 70, doesn't really matter. Um, the graph of this equation, what it is, it's actually got a fancy name known as a parabola. Basically what it is, it's a U shape. And we know their functions because when I graph them, what they end up doing is passing the vertical line test. And that is a test that we can use on any graph. If I draw a vertical line through my line, my parabola, my curve, whatever we have, as long as I draw a vertical line and we only hit one spot of our graph, we have what's known as a function. One X value gives me one Y value. Now there are two types of parabolas. When A is positive, we have a parabola that opens up and this curve reaches what's known as a minimum. So the way it looks is if I have a graph here, so there's my X and Y axes, the parabola is going to be U-shaped. So here's my parabola, it's opening up. And the reason we have a minimum is because my curve is the lowest spot so there's the minimum when a is negative the parabola opens down and i know it's a weird way to say it but it opens down and the curve reaches a maximum and again if i were to draw my x and y axes and I were to draw my parabola, my parabola is actually going to open down. So it comes up and then it curves back down. So there's arrows at the end. We are opening down, meaning my answers continue going down forever and ever. And the point at the very top is my maximum. It's the highest point my graph will go. Hence, maximum versus minimum. And the line of symmetry. So a line of symmetry is a line that I can draw that basically cuts my graph in half. It's kind of like a butterfly. Elementary school, we folded pages in half. We folded paper in half. We put dots and colors on one side and then we folded the paper over and it created the same dot and color pattern on the other side. That's basically what we're going to do here with the line of symmetry. I basically want to draw the line that cuts my parabola in half. So how do I do that? Well, we just basically try and find the turning point and I draw a line through it, a vertical line through that. So turning point is going to be right about here at the Y axis. So there's that and I'm going to draw a line straight through vertically. So there's my line of X, my line of symmetry. And again, lines have arrows at both ends. Therefore, we have our line of symmetry. Now it's always a vertical line that goes through the turning point. And in order to figure out what the axis of symmetry is, again, vertical lines begin with x equals, remember when we were graphing lines, we had y equals mx plus b. And when y equals a number, we had a horizontal line. When x equals a number, we have a vertical line. So that's why axis of symmetry begins with x equals. It's a vertical line, and it is going to be equal to negative b 
over 2a. So this goes back to the quadratic equation that we deal with, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. I am going to pick out the a and b value and plug it into this formula. So I'll take the negative value of b and divide it by 2a. And that's what I'm going to get for axis of symmetry. So this first problem here, what's the equation of the axis of symmetry of this per particular parabola? So negative x squared plus 6x minus 4. Axis of symmetry, I need negative b over 2a. So first thing, I'm going to identify values of a and b. So b is, a is always with x squared. So we have this negative out front of x, there's no number, so automatically a is going to be negative 1. b is going to be on x, which is 6, so I'm going to plug them in. So the negative value of 6 all over 2 times negative 1. So negative 6 divided by negative 2, which gives me 3. So the equation is x equals 3. There is my axis of symmetry. So again, vertical line running, running through the x value of 3. Then I can do the same thing for the next one. What's the equation for the axis of symmetry of negative x squared minus 2x minus 1? Again, I need to identify a and b. So first thing, a in our case is on x squared. Again, negative sign, no number, so negative 1 automatically. B is negative 2. So we take our axis of symmetry formula, negative B over 2A, and I substitute the values in. So the negative value of negative 2 all over 2 times negative 1. So it's just change the sign up top, so negative negative 2 becomes a positive 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 gives me negative 1. So I need x equals negative 1, which ends up being number 2. Now the turning point is another term for the vertex. So very tip top. Where is my parabola switching, in this case, from going up to going down, left to right? So we follow left to right, we're going up, and then I start coming down. Turning point is where... I stop going up and start going down. So the vertex has coordinates of x comma y. So if I only have the equation, how am I supposed to find the turning point? Well, we just found out how we can find the x value. The axis of symmetry is the x value of our turning point. So the first thing we're going to do is find axis of symmetry. What that does is it gives me the x value of turning point. So once we figure out what that is, we plug it in. We plug our turning point into equation, into our given equation, to find the y value. So what we have there is we, plot, we find the axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to give me my x value of the turning point. We plug that into our equation, and we find the y value, and now we have our x comma y value. Now the other thing we have is what's known as roots or zeros of the equation. So how do I know what they are? Well, if we look at a graph, it's easy to figure out. So where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So where, what is the y value when we cross the x-axis? It's zero. So find the turning point, we plug it, we determine the axis of symmetry, plug it into our equation, and then we also find out where our graph crosses the x-axis. That's going to be my roots or zeros or solution or answer any other possible way you could say it. So how to use the roots to write a quadratic equation? Well, we want to write an equation that has roots that are negative 5 and 0. 
So negative five and eight rather. So these are x values. So we know x equals negative five and we know x equals eight. So ultimately we want to get these equations equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add five to both sides on this particular one. So we end up with x plus five equals zero. And on the other one, we're gonna subtract eight. So we end up with x minus eight equals zero. So here we have two binomials, x plus five and x minus eight. So the quadratic equation we have, if we look back at what we did, what we had before, we ended up taking our two binomials, splitting them up, and setting each one equal to zero. So that's kind of what we have here. We have split up binomials equal to zero. So I'm going to take each one of these and multiply them together. So x plus 5 times x minus 8 is going to give me zero. And I'm going to use distribution. So x times x is going to give me x squared x times negative 8 is going to give me negative 8x. We got 5 times x, so plus 5x. And then 5 times negative 8 minus 40 gives me 0. What I'll do now is I'll combine the like terms. So we have 8x and 5, the minus 8x plus 5x. So x squared minus 3x minus 40 equals 0. So there's the quadratic equation with roots of negative 5 and 8. So we took our roots and we worked our way backwards. We took our answer and we came up with our problem. Now for example, going back to what we just learned about turning points and axis of symmetry, it says what is the coordinates of the turning point of the parabola given the equation y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Well, to find the turning point, the first thing we have to do is determine the axis of symmetry. So x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b, so as long as it's in standard form, we go right down the line. a, b, c are the numbers. So negative value of b, b is always on x, so b in our case is negative 4. A, there's no number on x squared, so it's just 1. So we have the negative value of negative 4 all over 2 times 1. So we end up with negative negative 4, so positive 4 over 2, which gives me 2. So my x value is going to be 2. So I can cross off our second answer, because it's negative 2. Same with 4. It's negative 2, so I can cross it off. So we're only dealing with answers 1 or 3 at this point. Now what I have to do is I have to take this x value of 2 and plug it into my equation. So we know x is 2, so we know y is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. And we can, to shorten time, we can always use the calculator. So 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. And I get 0. So I want the answer x value of 2, y value of 0, ends up being number 1. Our second problem asks, what are the zeros of the parabola on the graph? And to write the equation. So, the zeros are where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So I want to find those values. So I see it crosses right there, just to the left of the y-axis, and I see it crosses over here. So I want to list what those x values are. So x is equal to, I go left one, so negative one. And then the other one, we go from the origin 1, 2, 3, 4. So we go right four spots, so we have another value of x equals 4. So those are the zeros. So we call them zeros because the y value of that parabola is 0 at those two points. So x equals negative 1, x equals 4. And again, to figure out the equation, 
I want to make sure each of these is equal to zero. So those are the zeros. So now we go through the point, through the process of writing the equation. So we start off with x equals negative one and x equals four. We're going to make each of these equal to zero. So we add one on this side and we get x plus one is zero. Now on the other side, we're going to be subtracting four. So we end up with x minus four equals zero. So now that we know what equals zero, I'm going to multiply them together. So we have x plus one times x minus four is also equal to zero or y, it doesn't really matter. So x times x gives me x squared, x times negative four minus four x, one times x plus x, and then one times negative four minus four gives me zero. So combine our like terms, the negative four x plus x, and we end up with x squared minus three x minus four equals zero or y. So there is our equation, x squared minus three x minus four, given this particular parabola to the right. Now number three, if the roots of a quadratic equation are negative two and three, the equation can be written as which of these? So I hope paying attention to the last uh, couple examples, our binomials that we multiply end up having the opposite value. So notice we had x equals negative one and x equals four. We ended up multiplying x plus one and x minus four. So the values got switched up. So if we switch up the values of it, we end up with, we need x plus two and x minus three. So we're just gonna change the values of our given numbers. So x negative two becomes plus two, and then the other one would be x, and then three becomes minus three equals zero. So that ends up being number two. So again, we found all these different pieces of information that we needed. So we've started off with our generic quadratic equation, knowing that a quadratic equation results in a parabola on a graph. We're either going to have minimum or maximum. Axis of symmetry, we need to use this formula, x equals negative b over 2a. That will also give me the x value of our turning point, which we would then plug that x value into our given equation in order to find the y value of said turning point. The other thing we have to remember is our roots, our zeros, our solution, our answer, whatever word you want to use, they all mean the same thing, is where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So those are x values. So again, as in number two, our zeros, our roots, our solutions, our answers, are x equals negative one, because it crossed the x-axis there, and x equals four, because it crossed over when x equals four. And we can always find our given quadratic equation as long as we know the roots.